In September 2014, as my 48th birthday approached, I had no master plan. I did not intend to revolutionize how we think about what films are, quote, noir. No, all I wanted to do was rank my 24 favorite films noir on Facebook. First, though, I had to list every film noir I had ever seen. To simplify the process, I limited myself to films released between 1940 and 1960. So I turned to my small but growing collection of film noir books, as well as films designated film noir on IMDb and the program for Noir City 12, which I'd attended in January. From these sources, I compiled a list of 184 films designated noir in at least one of 11 sources. To keep track of my sources, meanwhile, I had created a separate column for each of them, entering a one if a film was designated noir and zero if not. Well, for the rough guide to film noir by Alexander Ballinger and Danny Graydon, I entered a two if the film was in their 50 film canon. When I was finished, I had compiled 11 statistically independent film noir lists. Setting aside the 26 mostly international films in the Noir City 12 program, I had 177 films from 10 sources. Converting each list to one for included and zero otherwise, I summed the values in the 10 columns to yield a count of how many sources included each film. Now, at the start of this process, my assumption, my priors in Bayesian terms, was this. Despite some variation in how, quote, experts designate films as noir, there existed a master list of titles on which these experts all agreed. Every authoritative source would thus include every one of these films, plus a few idiosyncratic choices. To put it into statistical terms, I assumed a bipolar distribution. Roughly, say, two-thirds of titles would be in nine or ten sources, and about one-third would be in one or two sources, with a few titles scattered between these two poles. To my surprise, however, the distribution was much flatter. Only 12 films appeared in all 10 sources, with 32 appearing in 9 or 10. On the flip side, 15 films appeared in only one source, with 27 appearing in 1 or 2. Just under half of these 177 films, 86, appeared in between 6 and 9 sources. Put another way, only 98 films, or 55%, appeared in more than half of these 10 sources. This is not even close to a master list. Thought-provoking as it was, though, I had no time to think about this distribution until after defending my epidemiology doctorate on December 16th, and attending Noir City 13 in late January and early February 2015. At the Castro Theater in San Francisco, I watched 19 films for the first time, of which 17 fit my favorite film noir criteria. But as I started to add them to my list, I looked at the giant film noir-related books I had just acquired, and I decided it was time to aim higher. Unable to sleep early one morning in March 2015, then, I brewed a pot of coffee, then trundled down to my home office. Opening a new Excel workbook, I began to enter the 999 titles from the filmography in Film Noir 100 All-Time Favorites by Paul Duncan of Jorgen Miller. As the title indicates, Duncan and Miller single out 100 titles for special consideration. I created a separate column for these films, uncertain what to do with it. I noted earlier that Ballinger and Graydon single out 50 films for their canon from the 410 films in total they discuss in the text as noir. They also rank their choices for the top 10 films noir of all time. When I finished with Duncan and Miller, I turned to John Grant's A Comprehensive Encyclopedia of Film Noir with its 3,253 detailed entries. However, 
Such entries as Beyond a Reasonable Doubt noted a remake or remakes which did not merit separate entries. Grant also compiled 263 films into 20 film series, including Boston Blackie and The Thin Man, but not every film thus compiled received a separate entry. I created a column for these extra films as well, equally uncertain what to do with it. At the same time, I discovered that some key books and articles about film noir present fewer than the 100 films Duncan and Miller singled out for detailed analysis. Paul Schrader analyzes just 77 of them in a seminal 1972 article, Notes on Film Noir. The three mid-1940s articles which planted the seeds for the idea of film noir discuss only 14 between them. I feared that including them would artificially limit the number of sources in which a film could appear. But I still needed to include titles from these sources somehow. Two years after starting, I had compiled 4,820 titles from 32 sources with a minimum 124 titles. If it was genuinely unclear whether the source deemed the film noir, I made an executive decision, noting my reasoning in the workbook. I usually erred on the side of inclusion. 19 of these 32 sources had one or two sublists, reinforcing my decision to make them the, quote, official sources for database titles. Summing the resulting ones and zeros gave me the baseline metric lists, which ran from 1 to 32, an elegant measure of how often a film is deemed noir by, quote, experts. An additional 14 sources, finally, maxed out at 95 titles. Among the titles referenced were five not in the, quote, official 4,820. After much deliberation, I included them, despite having a list's value of zero. Compiling titles from sublists, I found myself thinking of them as, quote, extra points. It was a short leap from there to a metric more comprehensive than lists. Points. For details, I refer you to the annotated bibliography in Appendix 2 of Interrogating Memory. As you can see, the two metrics are strongly related to each other with a correlation of 0.98. They are also distributed nearly identically. Just under half of these films, 2,327, appear on exactly one list with exactly one point. Fully 84% of these one-offs are in either Grant's Encyclopedia or Andrew Spicer's Historical Dictionary of Film Noir. At the other end, only 175 films appear on more than 20 lists, while just 237 have more than 20 points. That is, less than 5% of films manage to earn as little as one-third the maximum number of points. To be very clear, neither metric in any way assesses the, quote, noirness of a film, whatever that even means, given that no universally agreed upon definition of film noir exists. What these metrics can tell us, though, is which films are most widely considered noir, which are purely idiosyncratic, and which fall somewhere in between. And this is where my training in epidemiologic methods comes in handy. Epidemiologists are often required to break similarly continuous variables into discrete categories. A common way is to divide them into percentiles, say, the top 10%, the next 10%, the next 10%, and so forth. Well, just over 80% of these films, or 3,879, have at most five points. Because so few experts include them in their writings about film noir, I label them idiosyncratic. Roughly 9%, or 432 of films, have more than 5 but less than 12 points. Absent a universally agreed upon definition of film noir, these are the titles most likely to start an is it or is it not noir debate. I thus cleverly label these films debatable. That leaves about 11%, or 514, of films with more than 12 points. Now, 12 points is a very low bar to clear being less than 20% of the maximum possible 67 points. Nonetheless, I label these films um, universal. They are listed in Appendix 3 of Interrogating Memory.
The point, so to speak, is that there is remarkably little agreement on which films are considered noir. In fact, only 286 films appear on a majority of the 32 official lists, while only 64 films, 64, earn a majority of the maximum possible 67 points. So much for that master list of films noir I used to think existed, and many folks still do. In conclusion, then, I propose that in the absence of a universally agreed upon definition of film noir, using a measure of how often so-called experts deem a film noir, adjusted for somehow exemplifying film noir, is an excellent substitute for thinking about which films are noir and which films are not. This is the doctor reminding you that there truly is safety in numbers. <laughs>